Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization, sent a telegram to President Carter urging an investigation of the oil industry. Woodland's wire was sent at a time when the lines at the filling stations were in evidence here and there around the country. Also, the oil company's profits report for the first three months of this year had recently been carried on the financial pages. The profits ranged all the way from 28% increase to 343% increase, and this during a period when federal controls were still on domestic crude oil. Here's Devon Woodland and that wire he sent to the president. On behalf of the membership of the National Farmers Organization, I respectfully urge immediate action to implement a reliable audit of oil and gas production and distribution in the United States. This should be an in-depth analysis of supplies currently on hand, reserves available for use in the near future, the utilization of refinery capacity in the U.S. and offshore locations under the control of major oil companies, and profit margins taken at the production, refinery, and distribution levels. This data should be related to some recent base period in order that the public may be adequately informed. Responsibility for such an order should probably be placed with an individual or organization entirely separate from the present DOE leadership, and it obviously must be conducted by capable personnel under the direction of an individual who can provide a reasonable degree of credibility when the results are released to the public. What's new in commodity bargaining by farmers? First, here's Alan Scraw, who heads the hog division. He begins by stating the long-time objective, cost of production contracts with packers. Progress toward that goal is reflected in securing written contracts with Morrell and Wilson, plus other companies, and a verbal operating agreement with Armour and Company and various independent. Department officials are enthused about the operation of 200 collection points, where volume has shown a steady increase, up about 15% during the past year. Positive results of the South sell-off program are beginning to appear. This is a program that could affect the future of every hog producer in the United States. Producers are being asked to call approximately 12% of their bred sows and gilts that are retained for the breeding herds in order to forestall an estimated 16 to 20% increase in fourth quarter marketings. The National Farmers Organization has pointed with pride to the fact that new young leaders are being elected at various levels of the NFO. We have interviewed young county presidents. Well, today we're going to have some phone conversations with more of these young leaders who all happen to be women. They've been elected county NFO presidents. First, Lee Schultz, president of Scotland County in the Show Me State. We join where we had asked her about how commodity bargaining programs are going. We're very fortunate to be uh, along the Mississippi River. And for us uh, in this area, grain uh, particularly moves along that uh, collection, dispatch, and delivery system really well. How come you got elected president of Scotland County NFO? Our county membership is uh, very progressive. And uh, all of us uh, NFO members realize that it does take both men and women working together to make collective bargaining work. Are there any advantages, would you say, in a woman leading a county organization? I, I definitely feel there are advantages. Um, for one thing, most women today that are involved in agriculture, uh, whether it's on the bookkeeping end of the business or uh, running machinery or the proverbial go for all kinds of things like parts to oil, realize that the bottom line in agriculture is profit. And to attain profit, we have to work together through a collective bargaining structure. Shelley Robertson heads the Specialty Commodities Division. His top news is the increased acreage commitments NFO members have signed for bargaining. In the past four years, acreage increase has grown from a few hundred thousand acres to more than four million acres. And price is the big reason for a commodity whose production will increase nationally an estimated 70% in 1979. Last year, NFO signed 144,000 acres of sunflowers with a goal of 250,000 acres for this year. With 140,000 acres already signed, 
NFO is 20% ahead of 1978 figures at this time last year. And progress is continuing. Plans call for construction of a 70-foot truck dump scale in the Duluth Superior area by fall, with 75 to 80 percent of the production exported. Three crushing mills are also in the planning stage in Europe. The next lady president in the NFO is Lois Lefergy of Shoto County, Montana, one of the leading wheat producing counties in the whole United States. She talks about the increasing involvement of women. I think that it's important for uh, the white women to be involved in all parts of the farming operation in our business. As the individual memberships are strengthened by the wives being involved, well, that makes for a stronger county organization. And I think this is important. Okay. And for yeah. us, it would be very difficult to go back to marketing our product in the old system. We thoroughly believe in the NFO principle. Al Aiken is director of operations in the NFO grain department. He has some notes on restructuring and improving the system by which all of the thousands of grain transactions are coordinated for bargaining. Two of the new regional offices now are in operation on the West Coast and the Northwest as the NFO's volume in grain handling has dictated the streamlining. Other regional structures are planned in the South Central, West Central, North Central, East Central, Northeastern and Southeastern parts of the country and are in the process of being established. Updated equipment between the home office and the regional centers to include online computerization and mail by telephone will speed up the all-important informational flow. Each regional office will have a full bargaining program, handle all necessary communications for blocking, delivery, and payment of grain, as the NFO has developed its own functional grain handling system. The president of Washington County, Idaho, NFO, is Donna Stout. Let's join the conversation as she tells why a ranch needs a profit. The main thing is so we can exist. We simply cannot live without making a profit. We've gone downhill and downhill and downhill, and we've just got to break even sometime, or we just can't exist. Now, uh, what about bargaining successes? Well, A.G. Salfin in our area is our grain director, and he has pushed through and kept our program working real good here until this is the one thing in this area when you sell your grains through NFO, you show a profit over any of your mills or any of the rest of them. And now here's Walt Hackney, Director of Livestock Operations for the NFO. The cattle cycle is at a depressed level as far as numbers are concerned. At the same time, consumer resistance to beef prices has caused the industry to tighten their budgets and caused quite a number of packers to go out of business altogether. This situation has caused an uncontrollably erratic market. Collective bargaining, a flexible marketing system, and the orderly marketing that all go together is definitely what the cattle feeders and cow-calf operators of this country need. This has been proven in the last year and a half on fed cattle and cull cows both. Thanks to the participation of NFO members, we have been recognized by Packers, Reporting Services, and the Department of Agriculture as the largest single source of supply to Packers of slaughter cows in the nation. Our performance in delivering and properly describing cattle to Packers has rewarded NFO shippers with contract prices that have consistently led the market. Edith Summer is president of Route County, Colorado, NFO. She is also state NFO secretary. We had just surmised that a lot of people would be envious of one who lives on a ranch among all that gorgeous scenery on the western slope of Colorado. Yes, this is the western slope, right just 22 miles down from the Continental Divide. Women are very much clued into the details of running a ranch, aren't they? Yes, well, I know in my case, I handle the bill paying and the record keeping. And so I'm pretty much aware of how it's been over all the years. At another point, Edith Summer explained about an improved type of NFO cattle contract where each member is responsible only for his own type and quality of cattle. I would say that that, has, that was a real plus as far as 
as making a contract was concerned. Here's the report from the dairy department. Contracts with such major firms as Meadowgold, Borden, Seal Test, and others are indicative of progress made by NFO's dairy department. And NFO dairy members are finding it advantageous to be part of a national bargaining group. NFO members' milk prices have shown a 13% increase during the past year in relation to a 10% national average boost. Legislation is being drafted in Wisconsin to impose stiff fines for intentionally or unintentionally misreading and misrepresenting butterfat content in milk samples. The NFO has been active in support of the legislation, and John Gasser, Wisconsin NFO legislative representative, is expected to testify in support of the bill when hearings are scheduled. Dairy department officials of the NFO also are reporting a good call-in response to the three-minute weekend tape report available by Watts Line Call-In to the Home Office. And now the president of the NFO, Devon Woodland, discussing the possibilities for direct export. China's highest trade officials now know that they can get farm-fresh agriculture commodities direct from American farmers through the National Farmers Organization without paying large middleman fees at both ends. We have opened the door with the Chinese. They have literature which explains NFO and its nationwide collection, dispatch, and delivery system. Later, perhaps, we can talk business. My trip to China accents NFO's ability to consign commodities for export, a field in which the organization has been active for some years and is making some progress. In recent years, the NFO has exported soybeans to Rotterdam, wheat and corn to Japan, and the Netherlands, hay to Japan, and sunflowers to Europe. In recent weeks, the NFO Grain Department has received numerous inquiries from foreign buyers relative to direct sales of grain. These inquiries are being pursued by NFO officials. You've heard another county informational tape service produced each month. These reports are compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the radio division. I'm Phil Allen, and that for today is something to think about.